We all have our own controversial opinions of the Godzilla franchise, where 90% of the fandom loves or hates a particular movie and you're part of that 10% minority who has the exact opposite opinion to the rest of the fandom. Today I'm going to share my top 5 unpopular opinions of the Godzilla franchise. Please keep in mind that these are just simply my opinions, as I do expect a lot of people to dis strongly disagree or agree with me. It's important to note that we all have our own unpopular opinions, and let's just be respectful to each other, as these are fictional movies about fictional giant creatures. With that said, we shall begin. Number 5. I prefer Godzilla Final Wars over Destroy All Monsters. I have this one at number 5 since I'm not sure if I can even consider this an unpopular opinion, but I prefer the over-the-top goofy fun of Godzilla Final Wars over the more slower, paced, better, crafted Destroy All Monsters. The truth is, I'm not someone who grew up watching Destroy All Monsters first, and it doesn't ring a lot of nostalgia or personal preference. Is that to say that I don't like Destroy All Monsters? No, since I actually do like Destroy All Monsters and even consider it the fourth best Showa era Godzilla film. The destruction scenes, the kaiju spectacle, and the team up at the end where Godzilla and the other kaiju team up against Ghidorah was loads of fun to watch. The problem I have with Destroy All Monsters is that the pacing, the dullness of the characters, and just how it hasn't very aged that well in terms of the spectacle all holds it back. The worldwide kaiju romp was good for the time, and was originally meant to be the final film of the Showa era and the franchise overall, but of course, that was not the case. Now Godzilla Final Wars, on the other hand, I do have a lot of nostalgia and personal preference towards, since this was one of the first Godzilla films I grew up watching, has an all-out kaiju spectacle and city destruction, and human characters being heavily involved with the monsters plot and the over-the-top alien villains who plan on taking over the world. If that doesn't sound familiar, that's because Final Wars is basically like a remake of Destroy All Monsters. Final Wars for me is way more entertaining, the global destruction is showcased a lot better, and the film moves at such a fast pace that it never bores or as long as you're entertained. But this does come at the expense of great characters and a more captivating story. Even though Destroy All Monsters is technically the better made film, and even though it has less kaiju and the kaiju are used a little bit better than Final Wars, it hasn't aged that well and its entertainment value isn't on the same league as Final Wars. And unlike Destroy All Monsters, which didn't end the Showa era when it was originally meant to, Final Wars was actually the end of the Godzilla franchise as well as concluding the Millennium Era. Not to mention Final Wars came out at the 50th anniversary of the franchise, which for me was a much better way to culminate of a lot of the character in the franchise's history, the best way to end the Godzilla franchise at the time. So you gotta give it points for that. Number 4. Godzilla Rays Again is very overhated. Again, I don't know if this counts as an unpopular opinion, but because I saw the movie recently, I feel like sharing this opinion right now. So I saw the movie Godzilla Raids again, and after seeing the movie for the first time in like 10 years, come to the conclusion that the movie is honestly not that bad. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't hold a candle to the original Gojira and has a lot of problems, but as a monster movie, I think it's fine for what it is. It's the first time that we ever saw Godzilla face another monster, and it was the introduction of Anguirus, which has become a staple in the Godzilla franchise and also in the kaiju genre as a whole. Among the criticisms that it has is that it abandons the dark and serious tone of Gojira 1954, and the monsters don't feel as heavy and as powerful in size as, they, as Godzilla did in the 1954 film. But with that said, I do feel like people oversee or overlook the importance of this movie because it not only did it introduce the monster romp kaiju battle royales that we've seen so much in kaiju movies now but it also had like a cold war message to it that japan is in the middle of this godzilla versus Anguirus fight and that godzilla and versus anger is actually meant to represent the cold war tensions at the time that godzilla is the u.s and Anguirus is the soviet union i'm actually not the first person to point this out omni viewer actually made a video about this so the movie does have some sort of idea, some sort of message and, and allegory in there, just not as well explored as in Gojira 1954. Gojira touched on the dangers of nuclear weapons and the morality of using those weapons of mass destruction to save the world. This movie is about Japan moving on from the tragic events of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and Godzilla vs. Anguirus represents the Cold War tensions that happen that Japan doesn't want to get involved in this, so you gotta give the film, film some credit for that, and come on. Do you really think Godzilla Raids Again is the worst Godzilla movie of all time? I mean, I'd rather watch it over 10 of the worst Godzilla movies of all time. Number 3. I've never really liked either Space Godzilla or Hedora. The kaiju and their debut films. Alright, I know a lot of you are going to hate me for saying this, but just hear me out. Starting with Space Godzilla. I've never been a huge fan of Space Godzilla. Sure, he has some neat abilities, neat design, and was a somewhat menacing and imposing form of Godzilla. Even going as far as kidnapping Godzilla Jr. and creating his fortress in the city. But aside from that, he's just another Godzilla clone that's dull and unoriginal in concept, and I feel like the crystallized version of Godzilla would have worked better if Space Godzilla wasn't 
Instead, an original kaiju with an original design. Even the film Godzilla vs. Beast Godzilla, where he first debuts and it's just dull, shallow, it has the same repetitive plot as the other Heisei entries, and he has yet another mecha that's tied to Mecha Godzilla. And Beast Godzilla himself is just another Godzilla clone, with some admittedly pretty awesome abilities and a gnarly evil personality. Now, Hedorah, on the other hand, is the opposite, whereas Godzilla vs. Beast Godzilla was a dull, slow burn filler movie with an unoriginal Godzilla clone, Hedorah is a way more original concept of a kaiju, and the film he first appears in is actually does have an allegory to it. Hedorah in the film is an alien that feeds off Earth's pollution, and he's meant to represent the dangers of pollution, toxic waste, climate change, and toxic gases. Hedorah changes his appearances throughout the film. The way he kills people and pollutes the environment around him is actually pretty unsettling and grim. Hedorah is genuinely terrifying because of that. Not so much his design. I'm kind of conflicted whether his design is goofy or terrifying, since he looks like a mix of a Sesame Street character mixed with the 1957 film The Blob. Did a Massacre's Monster Madness reference anyone? Hedorah in of itself is a great concept, but not a huge fan of his design or how he fights Godzilla. Which, in my opinion, this film has some of the messiest, most disgusting fights I've ever seen in a Godzilla film. Add to the fact that where Hedorah's dark and grim tone conflicts with the goofy or cheesy tone of Godzilla. So tonally, Godzilla vs. Hedorah is a very conflicted tone of a movie. And had Godzilla not been in this film, Hedorah would have worked fine in his own film that touches on the dangers of pollution and toxic waste the same way Gojira dealt with the threat of nuclear weapons and radiation. To summarize everything I've said, Space Godzilla has a pretty cool set of powers and an admittedly pretty good design when viewed on its own. However, the unoriginality of him being just another Godzilla clone just from space and the film he first appeared in it was not one of my favorite Godzilla movies, it's actually one of my least favorite Godzilla films, holds him back from being a kaiju that I liked. Hedorah, on the other hand, has a far more interesting concept that's more original and has potential for thematically rich themes that can resonate in the same way that Gojira in 1954 did. However, the goofy design, the messy fights, the internally conflicted tone, unfortunately holds it back from being one of my favorite kaijus of Godzilla. Okay, moving on. Number 2, Godzilla 1998 is better than most of the Showa era. Okay, now I know a bunch of you are going to hate me for saying this, and many of you are going to be asking, how can I place Godzilla 1998 over most of the Showa era? Allow me to explain. I fully acknowledge that Godzilla 98 isn't really a good Godzilla film, for the obvious reasons. However, if you sit down and think about it, it's really not that bad of a monster movie, and on just the filmmaking and storytelling level, though pretty mediocre, it's still better than the majority of Showa era Godzilla films, like Godzilla vs. Megalon, Godzilla vs. Sea Monster, Godzilla's Revenge, Son of Godzilla, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, even though that's Heisei, and even the anime trilogy. I understand that criticisms of Godzilla 98, the most obvious being that he doesn't look anything like the Toho Godzilla that we knew and love, and of course does not have any of the trademark characteristics or thematic power that is present in the other Godzilla films. But if you ask me, Godzilla 1998 is far more watchable, entertaining, and even well made than something like Godzilla's Revenge. Which, come on, you really think that Godzilla 98 is worse than Godzilla's Revenge when that was just stock footage, cringy acting, really bad shout, protagonist, and just the movie overall was just really a bad viewing experience. Another reason why I like Godzilla 1998 is because of the design. While, again, I acknowledge that it doesn't bear a resemblance to Godzilla from Toho, I mean, it's a pretty cool design in its own right. It's a very dinosaurian like design, very iguana like design as well. And this Godzilla actually displays intelligence as well. He's able to maneuver around buildings, he's able to outsmart the military, and he even came, comes to New York City not to destroy, but to basically find a new nesting ground and to spawn his own new species. Again, not a bad idea as a monster movie as an original kaiju, but as a Godzilla character, as in a Godzilla adaptation, I can see why a lot of people hate it, but I personally liked it as its own way. I feel like people should set aside their own bias and see how most Godzilla films from Toho are not that good and haven't even aged that well, and are even very cringe-inducing, whereas Godzilla 1998 actually still feels like a movie, an updated version of the Showa era films, if, you know, if you will. With all that said, am I saying that Godzilla 1998 is somehow a great movie? No. I still don't think it's that good of a movie, but it's still better than what people give it credit for, and it's, let's be honest, people only hate Godzilla 98 because it doesn't look like the Godzilla they grew up watching. I have a lot of nostalgia and childhood memories of Godzilla 1998, as it was technically the first Godzilla movie that I saw, and it introduced me to the franchise. I like Zilla, and still do, as an original kaiju, while the rest of the film isn't great, but it's still better than at least 14 or 15 Godzilla movies across the Showa, Heisei, Millennium Eras. Alright, let's just get to number one. And my number one most unpopular opinion, I prefer Godzilla 2014 over Godzilla 2019. When I say this, I'm not talking about the movies themselves. Yes, as you all know, I do prefer Godzilla 2014 over Godzilla King of the Monsters, but those are just the movies. What about the Godzillas in them? Now, I know that both Godzillas are the same character, just with slightly different design traits, just like Heisei Godzilla and Heisei Gamera. Though if you ask me, the 2014 Legendary Godzilla design by Gareth Edwards was way better. Godzilla generally looked and felt like a large, naturalistic creature that was truly massive in size and still managed to capture the heart and soul of Godzilla without copying the Toho films or resorting to fan service. 
His spikes are far more original in design, and I do feel like they belong to a creature like Godzilla, if he was a real animal. Not to mention, I like that they created legendary Goju's roar from scratch. It's fresh and new, while still undeniably sounds like Godzilla. And this iteration of the Godzilla roar has become iconic in its own way. Now, Godzilla 2019 is the same Godzilla, though with some minor changes. The back spines are shaped like the 1954 Gojira spikes. The graphic novel Godzilla Aftershock goes into greater detail on how his spines change. A rounder tail that's longer yet more proportionally shorter, and more pronounced feet. Mind you, I don't hate the 2019 Godzilla design. It's good, and these design changes were made by someone who's a big Godzilla fan. But here's where I want to point out the difference to show you why 2014 is better than 2019. 2019 is obviously meant to be an homage to the show era Godzilla. With the spines of the 1954 Gojira, the rounder, proportionally shorter tail, and more pronounced feet. To that I ask, why did Doherty have to make these design changes aside from referencing the Toho Godzilla from the show era? The spikes of 1954, the rounder tail, and even the recycled show era roars don't feel like they are a part of this Godzilla, and the spikes themselves don't fit with the naturalistic spine seen in the 2014 design. I'm also not a big fan of the tail design of 2019. I prefer Godzilla having a more pointier reptilian tail that makes him look and feel more like a realistic animal. And the recycled 1954 slash Showa era roars in the King of the Monsters Godzilla also really bothered me and it isn't consistent with the 2014 Godzilla, but a completely original roar that still managed to capture the voice of the character. Toho did the same thing with Shin Godzilla, the anime trilogy, and Godzilla Singular Point based on those trailers, recycling old roars instead of making new ones. To top it all off, G14 Godzilla moved with a sense of power and skill that sells how large and heavy he was. He really felt like a massive creature, whereas G19 Godzilla moved faster, sprinted, and didn't have the sense of size and weight like G14 did. Godzilla 2014 and Godzilla 2019 are technically the same Godzilla still, and both represent different factions to Godzilla's character. One's more grounded in realism and felt like an actual animal, the other took on a more faithful approach to the Toho character, and felt like the Godzilla from his Showa era days. Though I prefer Godzilla 2014 for the more original design, consistent use of the original roar, the sense of size, weight, and power to convey the realism of the character without making it too realistic, and he felt like an actual animal with strengths, weaknesses, instincts, and subtle emotions. I don't hate the 2019 Godzilla design, mind you. I appreciate it and respect it for what it is, and Doherty obviously took creative liberties to pay homage to the Showa era, his favorite era. However, I don't think the changes he made on the design of Legendary Goji from Gareth Edwards were completely necessary. Godzilla sometimes felt too overpowered in King of the Monsters, didn't feel like any massive animal, but instead too much like a homage to the Toho films. And apparently Godzilla's pro-nuclear in this movie. Well, maybe, maybe not, but I don't want to get into that. So with all that said, I know a lot of you are probably going to get mad at me or some of you are going to think that I lost my mind because I have very different opinions from you, but keep in mind that these are just my opinions and you know everyone's going to have their own hot takes of the Godzilla franchise, where you might like one movie that everyone hates or you might dislike something that everyone else loves. So yeah, everybody has going to have a different opinion and as long as you understand the points I've made and respect my opinion and respectfully disagree, it's all fine and well. So those were my top 5 unpopular opinions of the Godzilla franchise. Hopefully you made it as far as number one, and what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with my unpopular opinions, or do you think I lost my mind and I'm not a true Godzilla fan? Let me know in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe to help my channel grow. And as always, long live the king.